uh, I'll be talking on the conjunctival inflammatory markers in POAG vis-a-vis -vis uh, PSVG who has no financial uh, disclosures. What was known previously is the conjunctival inflammation both clinical and subclinical recruits fibroblasts and which is a risk factor for scarring in trabeculectomy. And the concept of treatment knife and vis-a-vis -vis conjunctival treated with AGMs came into being from the early 1980s. What was also known were the cells identified were mast cells, HLA-DR, goblet cells, neutrophils, lymphocytes, and macrophages. However, there was no Indian study, and no knowing that our ethnicity is different and the propensity for fibrosis is more in pigmented races, we aim to identify and compare conjunctival stabular and inflammatory profile in POAG and PACG patients scheduled to undergo trabeculectomy. It is a prospective comparative intervention and exploratory study because of COVID, our sample size was reduced almost one third because the study was designed in 2020, tw 2021. And uh, it was an uncontrolled primary ACG and OAG requiring trabeculectomy with age more than 18 years were included. Prior to incisional surgery involving conjunctiva, dry eyes, long-term topical steroid use, chronic ocular pathology like keratitis, uveitis, epistaritis, and steroitis were excluded. Mitigated methods, trabeculectomy is releasable sutures, mitomycin 0.02% for two minutes was only given in patients with less than 50 years with conjunctival drill incision technique popularized by our center was done. Conjunctival tissue biopsy for, con for it was all cases was infrotemporal. It was subsequently fixed with formalin, paraffin and bedded sections of 30 trabeculectomy eyes, 15 PACG and 15 POAG were taken and cellular profile and immunology histopathology was done by five micron sections. These are some of the pictures of the staining of hematoxin, eosin, pars, diastase, and mesentrichrome. Electron microscopy was done for labeled immunocompetent, uh, immunocompetent cells profiling in conjunctival stroma. Four different fields were averaged. Immunohistochemical markers, which we were done, which they, we did for T lymphocytes, CD3, B lymphocytes, CD20, macrophages, CD68 markers were taken. Control samples were only five age-matched cases of cataract surgery. Outcome studies were the comparison of conjunctival inflammation and pattern of POAG vis-a-vis PACG vis-a-vis controls and inflammatory cells, fibroblasts, goblet cells, and then their correlation with preoperative IOP and the number of anti-glaucoma medications. What we found was that the conjunctival inflammation was pre-existing in 46 per, uh, in 13% uh, cases as mild and intense in 40% cases, no inflammation was seen in 46% and it was virtually similar for both POAG and PACG. Inflammation was primarily superficial and the pattern was primarily patchy. The, this is the stains showing the dense inflammatory exudates, uh, dense inflammatory uh, in, in, in the conjunctival biopsy sample in the red side is for the uh, patient and that's a control group of the cataract patient. While comparing fibrosis, again, there was no fibrosis in 73% and pre-existing fibrosis was there in one-fourth patients approximately, which is 26-27% patients. And it was virtually similar for both POAC and PACG and there was no statistical signal significance by FISIS test. The pattern, cell pattern was again inflammatory, more um, inflammatory and fibroblastic with the fibroblastic being more common. Inflammatory cells comparison was that the CD3 was more CD, CD20 uh, plus B, lim beta lymphocyte, B lymphocytes was significantly, uh, not significantly, actually didn't attain significance, uh, was more in the PACG vis-a-vis -vis POAG, and the macrophages was more in the POAG vis-a-vis -vis PCG, PACG. However, none of these in turn significance, we did both the medians and the mean because our sample size as from ST was less. So these are some of the pictures of the immunochemistry markers and cellular profiles. In addition to increased B lymphocytes, fibroblasts also increased in PACG. Goblet cell comparison loss was much more in PACG, but the difference again did not attain significance. Preoperative IOP was correlated and this CD68, which were macrophages, which were increased in POG, had a negative correlation trend only with the IOP. Fibroblasts, which were increased in PACG, had a positive correlation with IOP. Pre-op IOP was similar almost for both the patients at POAG being 40 and PACG being 38 mean, 35 mean. Correlation with injunctivals uh, with the AGMs, again, the POAG group, the goblet cells had a negative correlation with AGM and fibroblasts, a positive correlation. 
for the PACG, C, uh, T, uh, T cells had a positive correlation with AGM. So what did we learn? Pre-existing inflammation was present in 53% patients, intense in 40% percent. fibrosis was seen in one-fourth patient, cell pattern was fibroblastic primarily, goblet style cells were three times less than PACG vis-a-vis -vis POAG, inflammatory cell increase was there, CD3 was similar in POAG and PSOG, B lymphocytes were much more in PACG, and macrophages were 1.5 times more in open angle. So we didn't reach any conclusion as is with this, there was just a trend. Increase in AGM did give rise to decreased goblet cells, increased fibroblasts, and increased T cells. Inflammation was primarily superficial, uh, pavid distribution being patchy. Fibroblast had a positive correlation to preoperative IOP in the POAG group only. Limitations of the study, duration of AGM use was not there because if I had given more realistic information on cancer profile, but the patients of ours had an issue of adherence and did not know. So we recommend that link with long-term bleb survival and identify the key inflammatory cell may be the key to bleb survival. Thank you. So only one, of course, as you mentioned, sample size was yeah. small, which would have larger number. I but think you we had, had planned more than 60, but uh, we became a COVID hospital. Can, we became a COVID hospital. You can super. continue now. <laughs> once I COVID is gone. Yeah. <laughs> but the only thing when I saw the number of uh, AGM <laughs> was the more than three, four. Uh, was mostly there were two. The mean no, and one, one I saw this slide yeah. that the number four or more medications, POAG was one and PACG was four. Yeah, but the so again if you exclude that group, whether they had any, any impact, of course the number small sample will become more smaller, but whether it had any impact on the results? No, actually these were just one or two each, which were on four, because these patients, the problem with our patient profile is that most of these patients depend on the hospital for their you know, then supply. I, I, I so, you know, to correlate was uh, was little dicey because how many times they were actually using it in that two so years or one year. but. The ones which were on three or four AGM, if we exclude them because mm. of thinking that they would be affecting more of the on the fibrosis or the inflammatory cell, we could do that. We could do that if we have a substantive amount. And Ideally, so we should, that. I think, wash out and do surgery after three to four weeks. That uh, would be the again to remove ethical, the drug. Again, the ethical clearance so cannot be made because of high pressures I to wash and give dimox, dimox. for yes, yes. Uh, three weeks. With acid azelomide. It ethically cannot be done. Uh, I don't think that would be a big issue if EMGT can do <laughs> <laughs> without <laughs> medication, you know, glaucoma patient, non-glaucoma. I think it's definitely um, maybe difficult to convince but not impossible because we are not ethically wrong. If you really want to know the uh, impact of… Because would be at least one month. Three weeks. At yes, least one three month, three weeks, weeks yes, to four agree. weeks, so that yes. way. Yeah, thank you. Any, any other? Thank you.